Janssen is looking at new therapies for diabetic kidney disease. We have some very interesting things in our pipeline. First, we have Invokana, or canagliflozin, which is a treatment uh, currently approved for type 2 diabetes. The way that Invokana works is by allowing the body to excrete glucose through the kidneys in the urine. So this excretion of glucose leads to a decrease in blood glucose. It also leads to a mild diuresis and to a loss of calories. So you get a decrease in your blood, uh, in, in your weight, and you get a decrease in your blood pressure due both to the diuresis and to the weight loss. And remembering that I said that controlling your blood sugar and your blood pressure are very important for preventing and treating diabetic kidney disease, these things are very good for the diabetic kidney. On top of that, there's also a mechanism called tubuloglomerular feedback, which is activated by this, uh, this mechanism by which canagliflozin works. And there's some evidence to indicate that that may also be important in protecting the diabetic kidney. So currently, Janssen is running a phase three program. It's the only phase three program for this class of medicines, the SGLT2 inhibitors looking specifically at diabetic kidney disease. And we're running a large trial in this phase three program, 3,700 patients, to test the hypothesis, and it is a hypothesis at this point, that uh, treatment with an SGLT2 inhibitor, canagliflozin, can actually prevent the progression of diabetic kidney disease in those patients who already have it. SGLT2 is a pump in the kidney that is involved in resorbing glucose back into the body. When the blood is filtered by the kidney, glucose is freely filtered and it would go right out into the urine stream if it weren't for the body's pumps that pump that glucose back in. They're primarily, this, this work is primarily done by two pumps, SGLT2 and SGLT1, sodium glucose co-transporter 2 and 1. And I list them in that order because that's the order they're actually found in the kidney. SGLT2 inhibitors block that pump's action and allow the body to excrete these filtered glucose molecules and therefore excrete excess glucose in the patient with diabetes. SGLT1 is still functioning downstream of SGLT2 when SGLT2 is blocked. Uh, SGLT1 is uh, responsible for probably something in the range of 10% of glucose uptake. And so when you block SGLT2, you block the majority of the glucose uptake. And one of the nice features of SGLT2 inhibition is that there's a fairly low rate of hypoglycemia with this mechanism. And part of that low rate may actually be because you're not completely blocking all of the kidney's ability to take up glucose. Uh, but, but a large chunk of it. We have a partnership with a company called Vascular Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. Uh, and working with Vascular Pharmaceuticals, we have a drug that's in phase two trials that is looking to treat diabetic kidney disease. It's a very interesting mechanism. It blocks a molecule called alpha V beta three integrin. What we know is that alpha V beta 3 integrin is present on several cell types in the kidney and seems to be very important in transducing the signal that starts with high glucose and leads to a breakdown in the filtration barrier within the kidney as part of diabetic kidney disease. So when we look in animal models, we see that blocking the signaling in alpha V beta 3 can actually prevent some of the damage that high glucose causes, and again, that's the driver for diabetic kidney disease. So we're very excited about the possibility of this uh, therapy that blocks alpha V beta 3 for the treatment of diabetic kidney disease. In animal studies, the alpha V beta 3 uh, did fantastically well. Uh, it was studied in a diabetic pig model. Uh, and within that model, it was able to block some of the basic fundamental changes that high glucose causes in the kidney. Uh, these changes include uh, an expansion of the filtration barrier uh, that, that happens as pathologic. That was blocked by using this molecule. And in addition, there's a, a cell type within the glomerulus, the basic filtering unit of the kidney, called a podocyte. 
And what happens early in diabetic kidney disease and, and is characteristic throughout is the podocyte, which is a cell type that has um, slits that allow the filtration, these slits become effaced. You get a, a, a basically just a covering uh, over the filtration barrier. And that podocyte effacement was also blocked by using this molecule in the diabetic pig model.